Hi, I'm Shannon, owner of Pahrump Early Learning Academy, where we are more than just childcare. Hi, I'm Monique Mitchell with KPVM Television. My children attend Pella and they love it. The curriculum they have is pretty amazing and my children learn what they need at their level. Not only are the children learning, they're having fun and that's what matters. I like Pella. They help you with your homework and it's fun. Give us a call today to tour our facility at 751-5335. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. Tonight on News 46, a local man is arrested for a fatal DUI accident. Residents on David Street are shocked by a tagger. Pete Up Pumpkin Day celebrates five years. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Monday, October 27th, 2014. I'm Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. A three-year-old girl named Elena Rivera was killed in an accident Saturday afternoon in Las Vegas on Cary Avenue and Sandy Lane. According to Nevada Highway Patrol, 70-year-old Pahrump resident Charles Washington was driving a 2007 Dodge Ram 3500 and rear-ended a 1993 Toyota Corolla that the toddler was riding in. 24-year-old Robert Gonzalez, who was driving the Corolla, was stopped when the truck crashed into the back of the car. Gonzalez, a 34-year-old passenger named Josefina Sanchez, a two-year-old girl and three-year-old Elena were taken to University Medical Center. Elena died at the hospital. Charles Washington was arrested for DUI resulting in death and substantial bodily harm. The passenger of the Dodge Ram fled the scene on foot and has not been located. Here's an update regarding Friday's accident on Highway 372. According to Nevada Highway Patrol Trooper Loy Hickson, on Friday, October 24th, approximately 1.52 p.m., a gray 2006 Zion hatchback was stopped at the stop sign on southbound Red Rock Drive and State Route Highway 372. A black 2005 Suzuki motorcycle was eastbound on Highway 372 approaching Red Rock Drive. The Zion entered Highway 372 making a left turn into the path of the Suzuki motorcycle. The front of the Suzuki struck the left side of the Zion. The operator of the Suzuki was ejected. The Zion came to rest upright facing north in the center of the turn lane in the number one travel lane on westbound Highway 372. The Suzuki motorcycle came to rest upright facing north. The 53-year-old male operator from Pahrump of the Suzuki was transported to University Medical Center by flight where he succumbed to his injuries sustained in the crash and was pronounced deceased. The female driver of the Zion was transported to Desert View Hospital with minor injuries. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. And our condolences to the family. Early voting began Saturday the 18th and is running through this Friday, October 31st. 3,440 people have voted since the polls opened as of Friday. They have been averaging around 600 people per day. Election Day is November 4th. The polls open at 7 a.m. and remain open until 7 p.m. The results should be coming in around 8.30. And KPVM-TV will be holding a live broadcast with the election results as they come in. More news after the break. This portion of the news is brought to you by Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. Welcome back to News 46. Continuing with KPVM TV's recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, here's today's Desert View Hospital health tip regarding alcohol use as it relates to breast cancer. This health tip is brought to you by Desert View Hospital and Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Don't put your health on hold. We have time for you. Call us to schedule your appointment, 775-751-7100. A leisurely lunch for many women can often mean enjoying a glass or two of wine. Meeting up with friends may add a couple of beers to the mix. Entertaining at home may also involve having a few drinks. 
at moderate levels of drinking, about three to six drinks per week, there was a modest uh, but statistically significant 15 percent increase in breast cancer risk, regardless of what time in her life she consumed of that alcohol. Also, the amount of alcohol women drink may not stay the same over their entire lifetime, and that may affect their risk of developing the disease. Right now, take a little breath in. We were able to assess alcohol both early in life, ages 18 to 40, and later in life. And other studies have had such detailed assessments to understand the impact of alcohol consumption at different points in life. Dr. Wendy Chen from Brigham and Women's Hospital and co-authors did that by following more than 100,000 nurses participating in the long-standing nurses' health study beginning in 1976. Researchers assessed their alcohol consumption eight times from 1980 to 2008. Alcohol during early adult life is independently associated with breast cancer risk in addition to alcohol consumption later in adult life because alcohol consumption throughout someone's adult life may be associated with uh, breast cancer risk. The good news is that it means that at any time in her life, she may be able to decrease her breast cancer risk by changing her alcohol consumption. Researchers also say those changes in drinking patterns need to be held consistently over time to be effective. Not just what someone did for six months or a year, but really what they did over a longer period of time, rather than just one specific time period in someone's life. Researchers are quick to point out that this is not a call for women to stop drinking. In terms of a woman's overall health, alcohol may have some benefits in terms of cardiovascular disease prevention, so that will need to be balanced uh, against any risk of breast cancer. Catherine Dolph, The JAMA Report. Thanks so much, Catherine. Emergency crews responded to a two-vehicle accident Friday afternoon. This accident report is brought to you by... Half Price Lawyers, located on the corner of Basin and 160. Call 775 400 0000. A two vehicle accident occurred on Highway 160 and Dandelion Street on Friday afternoon. Both vehicles sustained moderate damage as a result of the accident. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, Nye County Sheriff's Deputies, and Nevada Highway Patrol all arrived on scene. All of the occupants declined to be transported to local medical facilities. Nevada Highway Patrol is investigating the cause of the accident, which appears to be failure to yield the right of way. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Residents near David and Irene Streets got an unpleasant surprise Sunday morning while driving through their neighborhood. Some crude vandals had apparently spent Saturday night painting profanity and drug references on a white fence that surrounds the neighborhood. The suspects spent an extended amount of time making sure to get both sides of the fence until they ran out of paint. They even gave the time they committed the crime and left a phone number for the police to call them. They painted on the actual roadway also just in case the police missed the fence. The phone number is most likely someone they wanted to frame for the crime, but police say it is a good lead for them to use as well as the paint cans they left at the scene with their fingerprints. The fence was on a property of a family who had just moved to Prompt three weeks ago. The owner told News 46 that it was a miserable housewarming gift. If you have any information regarding this crime, which seems to have occurred around midnight on Saturday, call the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 751-7000, and of course, you can remain anonymous. The fifth annual Pete Up Pumpkin Days was held this weekend at Ian Deutsch Memorial Park. Hey. Do you like pumpkin days? Yes. Tell me what you like the best. I say I actually like. <laughs> How old is he now? He's five years old. So you guys have come together for Pete Up Pumpkin Days because of your children and other uh, disabled adults and children here in town. Tell me how it's going this year. How many years have you guys been doing it? This is our fifth year doing Pumpkin Days, and it's going really well. We've had a real good turnout. Yesterday was packed. I think the Ruse and more really brought in a few extra people. And today we've had a nice steady stream of people coming through. Wonderful weekend all the way around. I know you don't have any numbers right now, but this is getting popular more and more every year. It is. Uh, we're growing, and obviously, like we've always said, we try to be bigger and better each year. We've added, like she said, the Ruse and more. We've kind of adopted our pyramids, built the fire truck. And we've already this year been talking about things that we'd like to change or make bigger for next year. So it's our goal to just make it continue to make it bigger and, and have a community event that can service everybody. 
Don't you think that beat up pumpkin days and now holidays have become really ingrained into our town, haven't they? People look forward to it. They have. A lot of people have said they've been waiting all year for pumpkin days. And that's kind of our goal is that there'd be a family event that people would be able to look forward to and bring their children to and, and know that they could have fun for a relatively cheap price. So much fun. But we can't forget what this is all about, and that's about uh, children and adults here in town. It's helping the disabled and special needs children and their families in town. We like to provide as much information and steer them in the right direction, help them with paperwork, with IEPs, um, and we also gather them once a month to do a social activity. So they're there with everyone, you know, and no judgment. And, and It's really important. Uh, to be able to find a resource when you're dealing with a disabled family member, to be able to find resources to get them help, to get yourself help, isn't it? It is, and that's what caused us to found this organization in the first place when Noah was born and, and when Paula's daughter. Um, we had nowhere to turn in Pahrump, really, so we created Pahrump Disability Outreach Program so that we would be able to provide that. And we've noticed this year, more than any other year, we're at about 30 people um, with children with disabilities that have stopped down or called because of our event that now know that we exist and came here to, to get additional resources and services. So it's certainly uh, our goal to make everybody aware of us, and uh, it seems to be working, certainly. And what's the best thing about it is that you guys have meetings that people can attend and have face-to-face -face conversations about what their needs are, what their concerns are. Right, and it's also a great resource because there's other families that have been to certain doctors. So if they're a brand new parent going to, say, a neurologist or something, they can talk to the other parents and go, what should I ask? What neurologist is good? What helped you the most? And so they get that feedback from the other parents also. So people can find out more about PDOP? They can at our website at www.pdop.info or by calling us at 702-516-0847. Say bye, Noah. Bye. That event was so much fun this weekend, and Noah's wonderful. Quality Auto is open for business. We caught up with the Broadhead Brothers to tell you about their new business that has been a part of their family's history for years. Yeah, I've been here myself 12 years now, and uh, this is my third business in Pahrump. Mm -hmm. And I'm really enjoying it. How's it going, Jabez? It's going good. Every, yeah. Everything's pretty smooth. So. What do you guys specialize in here? Everything in car repair? Just about everything. The only thing we don't really stock here is tires. And so I, I saw some of uh, your commercials, uh, struts and uh, shocks, belts, uh, engine work. Yes, we, we try to cover it all. If we can't do it here on engine work, we'll send it into Vegas to have, have it done, bring it back and finish assembling it here. And uh, like I say, we're going to try to do everything. Uh, we're even going to be a Hoosier dealer out here yeah. and try to do, deal with Hoosier tires. So uh, we're bringing that in as well now. You guys have been mechanics for how many years? I've been ranching for about 30 years. Yeah. So you, you've seen it all. Uh, I've seen a lot of stuff. A lot of a lot of things torn apart, brought to me, and yeah. just got to put it back together. Yeah, the same with me. We started in Salt Lake City with Broadhead Auto, and that is still open today and running in uh, Salt Lake. My older brother, he was also a mechanic, and he was in uh, Tune and Lube, and it was a franchise, and he did that for many, many years, and just closed that down a year and a half ago. And then Javis just came back this year, and uh, we decided to go ahead and open it up and uh, get into something we really want to do and, and uh, enjoy working together and keep keep our brother relationship together. And, and where's the best place to argue at? Right here in the shop. Speaking of the shop, it's clean, a nice waiting room here, and you guys have some uh, deals going on right now? Yeah, we got a $29.95 oil change, uh, up to five quarts. Uh, we're, we're doing that right now. We're trying to bring in, we're doing a break special. I think that's going to be $89.95 uh, for uh, most cars. And uh, we're just going from there and trying to bring something new every day. Winter's coming up. What should people do with their vehicles um, to prepare? They need to get in here and uh, have a uh, winter service checked out. We do a free 20-point inspection up here, mm -hmm. and uh, they need to bring them down. We can make sure they're ready for it. Because even though we're in the desert, we still freeze in the winter at times. So yeah. you want to make sure your, your fluids are all right and everything else. Belts, huh? Oh, and your belts, definitely. You, wanna, you, know, you don't want to be out on that road and get stranded somewhere with a belt breaking on you so come on in and like I say it's free 20 free inspection you might as well take advantage of yeah. it and uh, see what we do and uh, we'll go from there with you 
So we're at the top of Postal Road, right up here. Um, we're in the middle of town, so if people want to stop on by, they can do that. What's the address? It's 2340 Postal Road. We're right directly behind the post office and directly across the street from Twisted Sisters. And phone number? 537-6000. What are your hours of operation? 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Thank you, guys. If you want a special appointment, uh, just call us and we can make an appointment after hours. Same price, no extra charge for that. And we'll try to help you at our best of our convenience. We can also make appointments on Saturdays. News 46 will return in just a moment. Today's news is brought to you in part by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. Army Major General Darrell A. Williams, commander of the U.S. Army Africa, and approximately 10 other personnel are now in controlled monitoring in Italy after returning there from West Africa over the weekend. The American personnel are effectively under quarantine. There is no indication at the time any of the team have symptoms of Ebola. They will be monitored for 21 days at a separate location at the U.S. military installation at Vicenza, Italy. Williams and his team have been in West Africa for 30 days to set up the initial U.S. military assistance there and have traveled extensively around Liberia. Let's join Courtney Salmon with Weekend Sports. Weekend Sports is brought to you by Wolfenstein Construction. The Pahrump Valley Trojans ended their football season undefeated at home on Friday night as they stunned the now number two ranked Sierra Vista 39-27. Unfortunately, their undefeated home record wasn't good enough to snag them a playoff spot. The Trojans' final record is 3-4 and four in league. Interestingly enough, there is a five-way tie for second place. Three of the four playoff teams and two teams who lost in tiebreakers have a record of 4-3. and three. Faith Lutheran is the only exception at 5-2. and two. This is the best season the Trojans have had in nearly a decade. Cross Country met on Saturday at Foothill for the league finals matchup. Both the boys and girls teams placed third in the meet. The regional meet on Thursday at Sunset Park will be the last hurdle for both boys and girls teams to make it to state. Top runner for the boys was Bryce Odegaard with a time of 17 minutes and 19 seconds, placing third individually. Top runner for the girls was Fanny Desquanton, placing seventh individually with a time of 22 minutes and 55 seconds. Even if the boys and girls do not qualify for state as a team, there's still a chance for them to compete on an individual basis. The top five runners from non-qualifying state teams will compete for individual state titles. Girls soccer defeated Sierra Vista on Friday 2-1. Prump is hanging on to that playoff spot sitting in fourth place. They're on the road tomorrow against Cheyenne. PVHS Volleyball plays Cheyenne at Prump Valley High School tomorrow at 6 p.m. They are currently in fourth place. This has been Weekend Sports. I'm Courtney Salmon for News 46. Thanks so much, Courtney. Silvino Alves became the second rider in PBR history to win a third world title Sunday at the Thomas & Mack Center after being named the 2014 Professional Bull Riding World Champion. His world final earnings of $1.3 million added to his regular season winnings moved him past Justin McBride as the richest Western sports athlete in history. Bushwhacker made his final out on the built Ford Tough Championship round before a capacity crowd of 17,204 fans giving him his third professional Bull Rider World Champion Bull title. The 2015 series starts January 2nd in Baltimore, Maryland. There's a special event being held at the Bob Rood Community Center on Halloween, which is this Friday. On October 31st from 5 to 8 p.m., the Prump Youth Advisory Board is holding a Halloween Spooktacular, which is a Halloween event for everyone, but mostly for people that are 18 years and younger. We are going to be having a costume contest, games, prizes, snacks and refreshments, and it's a giant get-together for everyone in the community. So you're part of the Prump Youth Advisory Board, aren't you? Yes, I am vice chairman. So you guys decided to hold this event at the Bob Rood Community Center. We've had events like this in the past. It's going to be on Halloween. Yes, it is. Um, we are doing this event because we are trying to get the youth more involved with the community because a lot of youth don't really have anything to do and we want to have a more positive impact. So that's why we are having a $2 entrance fee if you do not wear a costume. So then that this goes towards future events and we have events already lined up, um, mostly going towards the holidays, but we're trying to get other things involved with that too. So we're trying to get everyone's input and with the Youth Advisory Board Halloween Spooktacular, we are also looking for some chaperones and some decorations 
like cobwebs, not real ones, bats that hang from ceilings, foam pumpkins, black and orange tablecloths, paper plates and cups, and whatever else we can really get. And I will be willing to go and pick up this material with my mom. And if anyone really wants to go and help sponsor us, um, they can contact me at 702-239-6521. Or if they want to contact me through email, it's rebecca.kc13 at yahoo.com. R-E-B-E-C-C-A dot C-A-S-E-Y 13 at yahoo.com. And then this event, you can enter for free if you wear a costume, because you guys are kind of having a costume contest, right? Yes, we are having a costume contest. Um, we have people who have yogurt coupons and a whole bunch of different cool prizes. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be three different age groups, um, five and under, five to 13, and 13 to 18. All right, and it starts once again at what time on Halloween? It starts at 5 o'clock p.m. and ends at 8 p.m. And where is it at again? The Bob Rood Community Center. I like how she says, we need some cobwebs, cobwebs, but not real ones. And I was thinking, wow, I have some of those at home. Thanks to Darby for the editing job. That was so cute. Here's Angela Miles with today's First Business Brief. This is the First Business Brief for Monday, October 27th. I'm Angela Miles. UPS delivers better than expected earnings. The package delivery company cites robust demand in the U.S. and Asia. After failing to handle the last-minute Christmas rush in 2013, UPS is balking up business and may add extra charges to large company shipments during the holidays. Obamacare is not inflicting overwhelming injuries to corporations, according to Bloomberg News. Insurance premiums for companies offering health benefits increased less than 3% this year, the lowest in 16 years. Payroll firm ADP reports none of its 600,000 employers plan to eliminate health benefits for full-time workers. However, Walmart is cutting off benefits to part-time workers, claiming increasing costs. And a new study shows most billionaires hail from the University of Pennsylvania, Harvard, Yale, the University of Southern California, and Princeton. That's the First Business Brief. I'm Angela Miles. When we come back from this break, we'll have your weather and a whole bunch of announcements. News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. Hello and welcome back to News 46. Today is Monday, October 27th. Today we had sunny skies with a high of 75 degrees. Your average temperature around this time of year is a whole one degree above that at 76 degrees. Winds were coming from the northeast today at 6 miles per hour with gusts up to 18 miles per hour. So we had some high winds today. The UV index today was 5, which is moderate. Humidity was at 12% today. Sunrise was at 7.02 this morning. And the record high in 1937 was 92 degrees. Well, tonight we'll have clear skies with a low of 48 degrees. Your average temperature around this time of year is 54 degrees. Winds will be coming from the north-northeast at 4 miles per hour with gusts up to 6 miles per hour. So our winds will be calming down a little bit this evening. Humidity will be at 22 percent. Sunset will be at 553 this evening and the record low in 1939 was 35 degrees. Tomorrow we'll have sunny skies with a high of 80 degrees and a low of 49 degrees. Winds will be coming from the northeast at 4 miles per hour with gusts up to 6 miles per hour. Humidity will be at 14 percent. Sunrise will be at 7.03 a.m. And the UV index will be 4, which is moderate. For our 7-day forecast, we'll have a mostly sunny week. We might be seeing some extra clouds outside on Thursday. And then this upcoming Saturday, we have a 40 percent chance of rain. Your high temperatures will be starting off in the low 80s, and they'll be going down into the mid-60s around this Saturday at the beginning of our rainfall there. And your low temperatures will be looking at a similar pattern, starting off in the high 40s and low 50s, going down into the low 40s and high 30s around this weekend. Thanks so much, Noah. Starting today, firefighter recruitment candidates who successfully pass written exams can submit job applications online with the fire departments of their choice participating in the regional recruitment drive. Applications will be accepted online only through the recruitment drive website at snvfirerecruitment.com beginning today through Wednesday, November 26th.
The California Trail Interpretive Center will celebrate traditional Native American history and culture with the Great Basin Native Market October 31st through November 2nd from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. This family-friendly event is free and open to everyone. For more information, contact the Trail Center at 775-738-1849. The Prump Town Board has appointed the Prump Events Advisory Board, or PEEB, to award grants and mini-grants for funding assistance to local nonprofit organizations for local events that promote tourism, economic development, and create culture, arts, and recreational opportunities within the town of Pahrump. Grant applications are available at the town office or on the town's website. Celebrate Nevada's 150th birthday by stepping back in time at Spring Mountain Ranch. Our state was battle-born during the Civil War. At this event, you will experience what life was like for the soldiers who fought and the women who kept the country running. In addition to two battles per day, there will be an 1860s-era baseball game, a Civil War fashion show, a field hospital, a theatrical performance, a church service, an 1860s shopping, and an address by President Lincoln. The event will be held this week. Weekend. For more information, give them a call, 702-875-4141. And that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. From everyone up here at KPBM-TV, we wish you a great night. And for you listening out there on 95.9 KACE, we wish you a great night too as well. We'll see you back here tomorrow.